Hello my charmed ones and welcome back to my channel for another video or should I say on-demand training. So today I'll be teaching you how to create strategic business plans for creative business owners and online entrepreneurs. This video is going to be formatted like one of my workshops, but since we're not live, it's my intention that this class is gonna be a little bit briefer and a little bit more on topic without my usual live class tangents. So it's gonna be easier for you to watch on demand and you can get the information and strategy you need without any distractions. Sound good? Let's jump in. So today's training is going to walk you step by step through the process that I've specifically engineered to help small creative business owners, digital entrepreneurs, influencers, and online marketers get strategic about how they spend their time on their business. This training is more than just about your basic business plan. Now, I see traditional business plans as a little bit too formal and I dare say a little antiquated. They give you a rough outline of your overall business structure, but they're not really good for processing the day-to-day -day implementation and strategy necessary to bring that vision to fruition. So a little later on, we are going to be talking about business plans. I'll talk to you about the traditional business plan, and I will, of course, be sharing my strategy with you for a more creative business plan as well. And of course, for this entire process, I have a dedicated tool that brings all this together called the CEO Strategy Planner. So if you have never heard of the CEO Strategy Planner before, you are in for a treat. I have essentially created what I consider to be the ultimate business planning tool for creative entrepreneurs, and it follows my proprietary process that you're going to actually learn today. So right off the bat here, I want to say yes, Part of this training today is going to be me sharing something with you that is valuable, that you may consider buying if it's something that feels right for you. But I want you to know that there is no pressure for you to buy anything today and you will still get tons of value from this training by learning about my process and implementing it as you see fit in your business planning process. So why should you care about business planning anyway? So if you've been running a business at any phase and in any form, and you have felt overwhelmed by everything that you need to get done, you feel disorganized in your strategy, you question if your effort is even paying off, you feel like nothing is really clicking for you with your business, then you need to start doing some strategic business planning. Businesses with a plan achieve better results with generally less effort. They see the fruits of their labor come to fruition and are able to better organize and implement new ideas. And they can track their results and see what is worth their time and what is not. And there's no right or wrong time to start business planning. So if you do any sort of business or you're gearing up to start your own business, now is the perfect time to start planning, even though it isn't January 1st. You can map out a plan for the rest of the year and you can see better results from your organized effort than you will ever see just winging it every day. So I want you to know that's why you really should be caring about your business planning, no matter what phase of businesses you're in, no matter what form your business takes, there's never a wrong time to start planning. And even though it's not January 1st right now, you can still make an amazing plan for the rest of the year, however much is left of the year, based on when you're watching this training, if you're watching it with me as it is published in February, or if you're watching it like a random day in September, whatever day it is, there is still time left for you to plan for. So do not feel like it's too late for you, like you can't do it because there are tons of benefits. And I promise you, if you're winging it in your business right now without a solid business planning strategy, you are definitely doing your dis yourself a disservice by not taking a moment to do some planning. And guess what? I'm going to tell you how to do it all today, right? So I'm making it easy as pie for you. Okay, so let's say you're a new follower and you're like, who are you? <laughs> I've just stumbled upon this video. I know YouTube sometimes throws these videos out in the algorithm and see to see who wants it. But if you're someone who's new to me, if you're not familiar with me, let me take a moment to introduce myself. 
Hello, my name is Alexis, but I'm also known as Miss Trenchcoat all across the internet. I design and sell digital tools to help ambitious women plan for a balanced and successful life and business. So if that is you, you're absolutely in the right place. So something I like to do when we talk about like me, right, when we're in, I'm introducing myself to my audience is I like to talk about how productive I am, right? Because I feel like a lot of times when we see talking heads on YouTube or on the internet, we want to kind of understand what their qualifications are, um, what they've gone through in life, their experiences that have brought them to this point to realize, is this someone who I'm going to be able to gain value from or not? So let's talk about how productive I've been in my life, right? When it comes to not just business planning, but overall planning my life in general. So I graduated college back in 2007, and I had completed two courses, major courses, in three years. So I went to JMU, go Dukes, <laughs> class of 2007. Um, so I'm someone who has been a little bit of an overachiever my entire life. It started before college, but you know, graduating early in three years with two full major courses under your belt, not an easy thing to do. Definitely a lot of planning and productivity went into that. Now I after college, worked my way up the corporate ladder at a Fortune 50, holding four jobs in five years and doubling my salary along the way. So I went to college, I graduated, I went into the corporate workforce, and so I have experience actually working with business on a corporate level, right? Doing sales and marketing, which is what I did for five years and very successfully was able to work my way up that, you know, very, you know, stereotypical corporate ladder. But I left my career at that Fortune 50 back in 2014 when I was just 28 years old to go full time for my own business. And I've been living a life of time, location, and financial freedom working for myself for nearly eight years now. So I'm definitely not someone who's new to this. I've been running my business for a long time. I went full-time for myself when I was 28. It's been almost eight years. You can do the math. I'm currently 35, about to turn 36. So, you know, I have had a variety of experiences in my life in what I would consider to be a very short period of time, right? I've been to college, done that. I went into the corporate world, did that, did amazing, and decided to go out into business for myself. So I'm definitely someone who has a variety of experience and has been productive in a lot of different scenarios. And my big passion here is that I love helping women to fulfill their potential because I feel like that was something that happened for me. It was important for me to fulfill my potential in life. And so as like a way to give back my sense of purpose and intention with all of my work is to help other women to fulfill their potential as well. And I believe that if you're watching this video right now with me, that today is the most important day of your life. Every day, I believe, is the most important day of your life because you have the opportunity right now to start fresh in your life and to get to work building your best life on your own terms. So you have to understand about me, I'm a rebel personality type, so I've spent my whole life ignoring the expectation that society has tried to put on women and doing things that people say are not possible. So I know the formula for achieving success and building your dream life, and I want to teach that formula formula to more women so that they can reach their potential and bring their dreams to fruition. So today I want to inspire more of you to live a charmed life that is focused on manifesting your own version of balance and success for your life and your business from this day forward. And if that success includes living a life of time, location, and financial freedom like it does for me, then you are really in the right place today. Okay, so I think that was a really great, a really solid introduction to what we're going to be talking about today. And of course, an introduction to myself. Again, if you're someone who is new here, welcome. You are in the right place. If today you would like to learn how to create a strategic business plan for creative business owners, and online entrepreneurs, let's go ahead and jump into the training. So the first thing I want to say really quickly before we get into the training is that I have a free business planning clarity journal for you. In the description of this video, go ahead and check for a link where you can sign up and get the free business planning clarity journal. This is going to help you to get clear on your creative or small business vision. So this is a free PDF with key journaling prompts that you can use to take a moment to pause, 
in the hectic life and business situation that you've got going on and decide what business you're creating this year so that all of your effort and energy moves in the direction of your big picture vision. This is so important. So if you're someone who's feeling really disorganized or you're someone who really wants to do a little bit of prep work before it gets into doing the business planning, this business planning clarity journal is for you. It's got a number of amazing prompts that are very helpful, things that I review visit often, even though I'm like eight years into business, right? Things that I like to review for myself that really give you that moment of clarity and that opportunity to pause and think about the big picture of the business that you are creating, right? So go ahead and make sure you download that. It will definitely come in handy for you as you're moving through this business planning process. Okay, so let's start off by talking about what a business plan is is, right? So when when we say business plan, what comes to mind for me is that traditional business plan, that document that outlines the intention and structure of a business. And, you know, these traditional documents, right, would be broken up into the following sort of structure. They would include something called an executive summary, which is essentially the business opportunity, the market for the business, and the targets for what the business is trying to accomplish a company overview. So the people in the organization and what each of them do, what their responsibilities are. The products and services. So your products, how they're developed, how they're constructed and delivered, right? Depending on what your product is, that is all included in the products and services services part of the business plan. Then there would be a marketing plan included in there as well. So this is information and strategy on how to market your product. Again, these are all things that you as a business owner, right? And the head of the business, right, the CEO, the leader, the president of the business, whatever you consider yourself, these are all things that you would be actually writing and creating yourself from scratch, right, about your business. Then the next part would be an operational plan, right, which is the methods for how your business operates, like what your day-to-day operations are like. Your financial plan, so the annual like profit and loss projections, right? So actually saying like, this is what I think we're going to make this year. These are our profits. These will be our losses. And then, you know, having that document to track as well as part of your business plan. And finally, the management structure. So how the business is actually going to be managed to make sure things are getting done, right? So that is the basic structure of that traditional business plan. But I think that we should all be thinking outside of that structure, outside of that traditional business plan model. Because traditional business plans inform what the business is trying to accomplish, but it isn't a roadmap for how to get there. And it's kind of an outdated tool for many modern online businesses, in my opinion. So if you've created a business plan in the past based on that standard template, you've probably reached a point where you thought, okay, so what am I supposed to do with this now? How do I actually use this now? Because it's a lot of info, not a lot of action and tasks for you to actually manage and do on a day-to-day basis. Or maybe you tried filling out a traditional business plan and you got confused, right? Because really, when you think of it, uh, think about it, all of those areas of the business plan, if you as a business owner are expected to kind of like fill that out from scratch, If you've never run a business before, if you don't have a lot of experience, you don't even know what's going in those areas, right? You don't even know how to do a marketing plan or what your marketing strategy is going to be. You don't know how you're going to be delivering yet because you haven't done it yet, right? So I think business plans are a handy reference material, right? If you have one and they are absolutely necessary if you are looking to secure funding for your business, but many creative small business in owners and influencers and online entrepreneurs that are doing digital marketing aren't taking out small business loans or courting venture capitalists. So the kind of need for that document isn't, you know, so immediate for, you know, the average small business owner who works online the way I do and perhaps you do as well. So I don't think that the traditional business plan is helpful or necessary for creative small businesses, content creators, digital entrepreneurs, and marketers who are really truly experimenting with doing business on the internet and may try different strategies to find what works. I think that for us, right, I know for me, I would never have been able to really write a pretty effective, like I wouldn't have been able to write an effective 
<laughs> or robust business plan at the start of my business, right? I actually had to get experience doing things first, testing things out, experimenting, figuring out what works. So a traditional business plan doesn't work for many of us, I think, especially those of us who are dealing with digital marketing, working online, working through virtual services, virtual products, or even you know fulfilling real products, but you are operating your business online and not in a brick and mortar. So then what are we going to do instead, Alexis? Since now you've said that we, we don't really need a traditional business plan, what do we do instead? Okay, so this is the part where I'm going to start talking to you about my CEO strategy planner, which is my strategic business planning process and tools, okay? Now let's start off by talking about this term CEO. The term CEO for me, when Alexis uses it inside of her business, it actually has a double meaning. So yes, it can mean chief executive officer. That's like the traditional meaning. But let's be honest, okay? Many creative small businesses are started by a single creative entrepreneur with a passion and a vision, like myself. I'm a solo entrepreneur. I still am after all of these years because that's the way I want it in my business. Um, and you starting off online or, you know, working in a service, you know, business online, doing digital marketing, promoting your goods through the internet, you may have very well started by yourself, right? So this idea of a chief executive officer is a little bit silly in small businesses where there's only one of us running this show here. So what I've done is I've named my business planning strategy CEO to stand for creative entrepreneur optimization, right? Because that's what this strategy is all about for me. It's all about helping business owners optimize the way they manage, organize, and work on their businesses, which is especially helpful if you are the only one doing it all in your business, or if you have like the support of maybe a VA or just a very small team, right? You don't need to worry about being a CEO, right? Like not in the traditional sense, but you need some creative entrepreneur optimization, right? So like I can almost feel some of you like nodding your heads through this video right now. If that's you, definitely no let me know in the comments. And I would love to hear about your business, how you feel as a single business owner, and really being the head of your ship, right? The captain of what you've got going on in your life and your business, right? Okay, so that is what CEO stands for for me. I'm not chief executive officer, more like creative entrepreneur optimization, okay? But there is this idea of being a CEO and what it means to be the CEO or the head of your business, right? The CEO, that position that we are stepping into, they set the vision for the business, right? They're the ones that set the targets and make the objectives. They oversee the plan and make sure the plan is on track. But most creative entrepreneurs and small business owners aren't fulfilling this role to the detriment of their business. See, I think for us small business owners, we wear a lot of hats, but the CEO hat is the last one we actually reach for because most of us are focused on the day-to-day -day work, right? Wearing what I call like the employee or the worker bee hat, right? Most of us are focused on the daily to-do list, what is like immediately needs to be done now, what the next thing coming our way is, the next email, the next post, the next call, the next order. But... The truth is, is that only 20% of the things that we're filling our day with are creating 80% of the outcomes and the results that we're actually getting in our business, right? So if we're super busy being the worker bee for our business, not spending enough time wearing that CEO hat and thinking about the big picture business vision, right? We are really overwhelming ourselves with a lot of different tasks and a lot of different work almost needlessly, I would say, right? Because if only 20% of the things we do create 80% of our results, there's a lot of things that we are likely doing in a day that don't really need to be done or don't need to be done the way that we think they need to be initially, right? And that's where the optimization comes in here. But part of this CEO optimization is that for each of us, the activities that create that 20% are going to vary. And so it's important that we really have an understanding and a quantification of what our work is and what is really moving the needle in our business. This is where the importance of business planning really comes in, right? Because to get the best results with the least amount of effort, we must create a plan. We need to stick to the plan and we need to track 
to make sure our actions are worth our time. We must have a process to follow that keeps our plans easy to make and easy to follow. And we must use the right tools for our needs, right? So talking about my personal planning tools, these are basically everything I use to plan my business. I use, if you guys are new here, I use a paper planner of my own design in a disc bound system that includes the following inserts, my master plan system. So the master planner is my calendar and agenda inserts. So it's the place where I'm going every day to set my top three tasks, to schedule any appointments, to really handle and manage my workload is done in the master planner. Then I use the CEO strategy planner, which is that dedicated business planning tool that helps me to actually map out that business plan vision, right? And instead of it being that traditional document of a business plan, that's just, you know, ideas and structures, right? It actually helps me map out the individual work, the individual tasks that I have to actually execute on on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, I also use a bunch of you know, actual digital tools as well. Although I'm a lover of paper, right? And I think that paper is amazing. And if you are someone who runs a small business and you don't have a huge team that you have to manage, I think it's great to use paper to get all of your big thoughts, plans, dreams, and ideas out of your head onto paper so you can get them organized and get them done. But digital tools are also very helpful as well. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna discount the digital because I use digital tools as well, including Apple Calendar, and Apple Notes, because I am a Mac user, I have an iPhone, like I'm an iPhone person. So I use Apple Calendar for reminders that pop up. That's one of the negatives of having a paper planner is it doesn't like make sounds or give you alerts when something is due. That's what my phone and my computer and my Apple Calendar are for. I also use Apple Notes, right? So this is an application that is really good for literally writing things down, taking notes, organizing information. And for me, as a small business CEO, a solopreneur, I love Apple Notes because it syncs between my phone and my computer. But there are a ton of other Notes apps that actually do that as well. I think there's one called Evernote, maybe GoodNote. I've heard of other ones, but because I'm an Apple person, I just use the things that come standard on my devices, keep it really easy, right? So I use Apple Notes as well. And I also um, use a lot of Google Drive spreadsheets. So I am kind of a little bit of a spreadsheet nerd. I think, you know, you know, it's not for everybody, but spreadsheets definitely are for me. And I like using the spreadsheets on Google Drive to kind of organize additional information for myself as well. So, you know, I do have some information digitally on Google Drive to help me create, you know, kind of keep track of certain things. So those are all of the planning tools that I actually use. But what about, what about the process itself, right? We need to talk about the overall process. So here is the CEO strategy planning process. Like this is the business planning process. We already kind of reviewed the process of a business plan, the traditional business plan. Here is my method for business planning. Okay. So I start with the creative business plan. Like I said, I have like my own version of a business plan that's not so in depth, not so corporate, not so formal. That's way more friendly for creative business owners, entrepreneurs, et cetera. The creative business plan has a brief executive summary, target market, and brand vision to get clear on the essential business elements you need to inform your business actions. Look, I'm not saying you don't need any of the elements that come from a business plan. You don't need all of it, I think, for a small business, but I think we can pare those things down to the actual essential parts of the business plan that work for creative entrepreneurs to make sure we are defining certain structures in our business that help make it easy for us to actually make sure that we're measuring and tracking and we're on track for you know the work that we need to be doing. Next, I have a yearly business plan, right? So I've got my creative business plan, then we cut it down into a yearly business plan. This is where we're gonna break your business goals into quarterly and monthly objectives, right? So when I set my goals at the start of the year, I break things down into quarterly targets, monthly objectives, right? To make sure everything is mapped across the year, I think is so important. And like I said, even if you're not starting in January 1st with this, if you're starting this at a random in the middle of the year, let's say, um, you can still take this 
and just plan out for the rest of the year, right? You don't have to plan a full year at a time. I really like to think of my business planning as quarters of the year, right? So I like to focus on a quarter at a time, but you can plan for any period of time that you have left in the year, right? So no period of time is really too small. Next, we take the business objectives and we break those objectives into strategic action plans, right? So we've set these objectives. We said, these are the things we're going after. This is what I wanna make happen in the business this year. So what is the actual strategic action plan to actually make it happen. This is where we're gonna get into individual actions and tasks that we can actually map and we can assign into our planner and, and track and map those to make sure everything is getting done. Then we have the marketing plan. Yes, another part of the traditional business plan that is pretty helpful, right, is a marketing plan, especially if you're someone who's working online the way that I am. You know, content marketing is such a big thing to have to manage, right? Creating content for your platforms and if you're using multiple platforms, how do you kind of organize it all? Well, I organize it with a, mar a marketing plan that helps me to brainstorm, track, and outline content and marketing campaigns as well. So anything marketing related, I map that out with my marketing plans. And finally, last but not least, financial planning obviously has to be part of any business. Even a creative small business needs to be doing financial planning. This is where you're going to project and track your income, expenses, business savings, and even donations, right? So that is the overall process for my creative business plan. My CEO strategy planner is broken into these sections. So let's go ahead and take a look inside the creative business plan, inside each of these sections of the CEO strategy planner so you can actually see what the worksheets, what the inserts, these tools look like and how we're mapping out information. Okay, so first the creative business plan has an executive summary, right? And it has some of the more traditional things you'd expect, the business name and tagline, your business values, your business manifesto. So your business name and tagline, that's pretty self-explanatory. Your business values, right? So what are the things your business is going to be valuing, right? Like, are you someone who values sustainability? Are you valuing um, natural products, handmade products? Are you valuing um, good service, right? Depending on what business you actually run, what are your business values? For me, some things that I am really into as my business values are like digital on-demand tools, right? That's like one of my biggest business values is to have tools that are digital, that are on-demand, you can access them anywhere and you've always got them. That's one of my personal business values. And then your business manifesto is kind of a blurb you will write. <laughs> That's like an intention for what you're doing with your business, right? So you can write out your manifesto as well. I think it's really important to have that there so you always kind of understand and know if all of your plans are pointing back to your business values and your business manifesto, that intention you're setting for your business. Next, we've got a page for target market. So what does your business sell? This is really important. What are the things that you sell? How are you earning income, right? Because sometimes we're not selling things, like not actual products. Sometimes we're selling digital products. Sometimes we're selling our own services. And sometimes we're selling, if you are an influencer online, um, someone who does a lot of content marketing and you get ad revenue from that, sometimes you're selling actual placements in your content, right? So what does your business sell? Who are your customers, right? Who are the people that actually are going to be buying from you? I know that it's so easy for us to think everyone in the world needs the thing we're selling, but for most of us, that's not really true, right? So who are your customers specifically? Who is that ideal customer that you are trying to attract? It gives you space to kind of write out who that ideal customer is. And then the very important, the outcomes that you produce for your customers. So what are the solutions that your products or services provide to people? You need to be really clear on what those outcomes are. Very important when you're doing your own marketing to know what those things are so you can effectively communicate to your customers why they need what you have to sell. And then how you market to your customers, right? So what is your marketing strategy, right? For me, I'm someone who uses a lot of content marketing, right? That's basically all the marketing I do is content marketing. And I create YouTube videos and I blog and I use Instagram and I send emails to my email list. 
So how do you market to your customers? What platforms, what frequency, what format of media? You have an opportunity to kind of lay that out as well. Okay, next we're talking about the business vision, right? So the brand vision, where do you see your business in the next year, in the next three years, in the next five years, in the next 10 years, right? So you could literally just write this out right now. Um, You know, I think it's very important that we understand that we can achieve all of our grandest goals for our business, but we might not be able to get them all done Today, we might not be able to get them all done this week, this month, this year, right? So I do think that there is something very valuable in having a plan for how your business is going to change and evolve incrementally over the years, right? And I'm not saying that you can't um, have tremendous growth from year to year. You absolutely can. But I do think that it's really great for you to focus on what you want right now and building that part of your business out, and then realizing, okay, in the future, I also want to add this element to my business, and in the future, I see my business doing this and developing this way. Having these plans really helps you to stay focused on the most immediate priorities in your business, right? So you write out this business vision, what you want your business to do this year, in the next three, five, 10 years, will give you a nice little roadmap to help you understand that you do have time to get it all done and that your business is a serious endeavor. This isn't just something where you're trying to earn money real quick and just turn a buck, right? This is something, at least for me, where I intend to be doing this for the rest of my life, right? So I need to have that long-term vision of where my business is going, how it's evolving and developing throughout the years. Okay, so now let's talk about the yearly business plan, okay? So here in the yearly business plan, you can go ahead, the first thing I always recommend is to set a target income, right? So what is your target income goal? The amount of money that you are trying to make this year. You wanna take that and you wanna break that into quarterly targets, okay? Then you wanna set quarterly objectives, right? So set three objectives to work on for each quarter, which would be kind of, I think of these as being milestones for the bigger picture of what you're trying to accomplish this year. So think about what that one year vision was for your business and break it down into where you see things being at the end of Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, right? So we've got that business revenue, but what are the actual objectives? What are the actual things that you're going to have created? The things that you would have built out, the systems and the processes in your business and map those out on a quarterly basis. And I like to put no more than three objectives in any time period. So there are three of these milestone objectives in the quarters of the year, And you're going to see later that I do the same thing with monthly objectives as well. So we set the quarterly objectives, right? Those kind of milestones of where we're going throughout the year to bring our business goals to fruition. And then I also have an area for you to take that one year business vision and break it down into the actual objectives the things that you're going to actually work on in terms of your products. So what products or services do you want to create, package, or offer in this year? List them out. List building. So where do I want my list to be this year? What lead magnets do I need to create in order to grow my list to a certain size? And that could be your email list. That could be your YouTube channel. That could be viewers on um, your blog, right? Or Instagram followers. Whatever your platforms are where you are building lists, where you are bringing in potential customers and followers into your business and letting them know about you and what you do and what you have to offer, What things are you trying, what objectives are you trying to reach in that area? Marketing, what content campaigns or funnels do I need to create, right? So like when it comes to digital marketing, we have all of these different tools and all of these different opportunities to create some really awesome systems online. So what marketing elements do you need to work on this year and have done by the end of the year? And then development. So where do I want to add incremental improvements to my business as time progresses, right? Especially if you're someone who's been in business for a few years, you kind of know already that there are always these things um, that pop up and you're like, wow, I really wish this would be a little bit better. Um, You know, I would like to update this. I would like to upgrade my website. I'd like to change my theme, right? So what are those developmental things that you want to do for your business that might not be like the biggest changes, right? 
or the most the highest priority, but there are going to be little things that are going to help add incremental updates into your business and increase the value, the user friendliness, you know, the processes make things easier for you as well, right? So what are those development objectives? Okay, then we get to our monthly objectives. So looking forward through your year, once you've kind of listed out all of those different objectives on those different four categories, look through your year and fill in when you're going to do key objectives for a, in a specific month. What month does that objective belong to? Map out your plan of when you are going to actually work on the things you're saying you want to bring to fruition. And I also recommend you fill in any other important information that pertains to individual months as well. So I think one of my biggest strategies for ensuring that you're planning for a balanced life and business is that if you know there's a period of time that's going to be very hectic for you on a personal level, right? that maybe you want to make sure that you're not over planning business things in that month, right? Or in that period of time, right? So when it comes to setting your monthly objectives, I also recommend three. Try to put three objectives in a month and that's up to three. That doesn't mean that every month has to have three. Um, I'm definitely a believer in white space. So assign some of those objectives, right? Into the, across the months of your year, right? And that they belong to no more than three in a month. Okay, so now we get to creating the quarterly business plan. You're going to start here by setting the target income from the quarter. Remember, you had already broken down your yearly revenue goal into quarterly goals. Um, and those quarterly goals could be, you know, taking the full year's target and dividing it by four, or you could put different weight into different quarters of the year, however you prefer. So when you're starting off with creating your quarterly business plan, you're going to start with that target income goal. And a lot of people ask, like, well, how do I know what do I have to do uh, to actually hit that target goal? Or how do I know what would be reasonable to set that target goal? And the way I do this is by taking my individual products, how much revenue I make from each of those products, and I multiply it by an amount of products that I either expect to sell or I'm going to set a target for what I'm going to challenge myself to sell. And then that comes up with a revenue target, right? So if we say that, um, let's just say, for instance, I sell these phone stands, right? These like flippy phone stands. I got this off Amazon. They're not very expensive. But let's say that this flippy phone stand costs $20, right? Um, that's how much revenue I get from it, right? From making these, we'll say, right? So if I want to make Let's say I want to make $20,000 in a quarter selling this, right? Let's just say this is my only product, <laughs> okay? So we'll take 20,000 divided by, what did we say it was, 20 bucks? That means I have to sell 1,000 of these, right? So that is how you'll be able to start understanding at least your revenue goals and your revenue targets, right? Sometimes if you've been in business for a while, you might know what to expect for how many sales or what I really like is to set a target goal for myself and say, look, I'm going to sell a thousand of these this quarter. And so all of my marketing plans and the things that I actually do, my content are going to be revolved around, we're going to revolve around making sure that I reach out to as many people as I need to, to sell a thousand of them, right? So that's just a little quick and dirty on setting your revenue goals and understanding if those are reasonable or not. Next, right here, as you can see, so we've set our, our goals here, and I already gotten ahead of myself here. We're going to brainstorm the ideas, right? So what are all the things I can do, the strategies that I can implement to affect the outcome of that income goal? So if I'm trying to sell a thousand of these, right, does that mean that I need to, um, you know, have like a 10,000 people, right, actually see this, right, and actually maybe like read content on this or watch a video about this, right? I have to make sure that I'm getting the word out about this um, to as many people as possible. So what are all of those strategies, the things that I can do to actually sell those products at the targets that I have, I've, I have, you know, outlined? And yes, it is to some extent guessing. Planning is guessing, especially for your business very often. 
But after a while, as you make plans and you see what your results are like and you understand and you test out different strategies, what ends up happening is you begin to see the things that are the most effective ways for you to you know, sell your phone stand or whatever it is that you're selling so that you know how to optimize the way you're spending your time to get actual, you know, more products being sold, et cetera, bringing in more revenue to your business. Okay. And then after we set the revenue goals and we do the brainstorming of our ideas for what we actually want to do to to actually make sure it happens, um, we have a quarterly plan that we can map out. So for every month, I like to set a focus, right? So what is the most important thing or the theme of the month? What is the thing that I'm focused on selling? Like what am I putting my energy and effort behind, right? So it could be like, okay, I'm going to sell a hundred of these this month, right? That could be my actual focus, right? Marketing. What key content or campaigns do I need to do to then support what that focus is, right? So if I want to sell a hundred of these this month, then I need to make sure that I have a marketing campaign or enough content going out so that I get this guy in front of the most eyes possible so that I increase the chances that I'm going to hit the target that I've set. And then list building, right? So what are the lead magnets, the networking, the community building activities that I'm going to do to bring in those eyes, right? To make sure I'm getting the eyes on my actual product that I'm selling, you will list those out. And so that's the structure for how I like to plan out my quarter, right? focus on the revenue goals, breaking down what that means in terms of sales, brainstorming all of the strategies that I could be using, and then kind of creating a plan where I identify my focus for each month, identify the marketing campaigns or the marketing activities that are going to help me get there, as well as the list building campaigns or activities that are going to help me to grow my following so that I know that more people coming in means a greater number of people who are going to be able to buy my products, right? So that is the quarterly business plan. Then your monthly overview, right? So we've set out the quarters. Now we're going to set out the month. My monthly overview starts out with that focus, that most important thing or theme. We already said what it was when we created our quarterly plan. So you're just literally just writing <laughs> writing it into your monthly plan as well. Then your campaigns. So list out what are those marketing campaigns that are going to be active during the month. Again, you've already kind of planned this out um, on your quarterly plan, but your monthly plan is a great time to check in and make sure that you're still in alignment with what all of those plans are. And if something needs to change, this is the point where you're going to want to change it. Then you want to fill out your calendar for the month. And you can see here on this insert, it is like a blank monthly insert. So you can fill in the dates and then you populate the calendar with your overview for your marketing or the due dates for some of your tasks or things that you've got going on. If you're going live, right? What are the days you're going live on Instagram or YouTube or what are the days content are going out, right? You can map out your monthly plan for all of your work on that little calendar. And then you are going to populate a list of key tasks, right? So these monthly business tasks broken out by area of your business for really good tracking. So again, we have broken out our business plans into objectives. We've taken our objectives and we've mapped them out across the quarters of our year and across the months of the year. And then when it comes to actually creating our monthly business plan, we're taking those objectives and those action plans, right? That were lists of things that we need to work on. And we are going to assign them here into the key tasks right? And I realize now that I'm saying this, that we haven't gotten to the objectives yet. So just hold that information in your mind. But we're going to list out on our monthly business plan, all of the tasks that we need to get done for the month. And we even have categories um, that we actually use to track what sort of work we're actually doing. So the categories on that page And I'm going to go ahead and pull a blank one out of my actual planner just so we can kind of see this. See here the categories here? Those are products, list building, marketing, development, and other. So remember we had broken out those lists, right, in our yearly business plan of the products that we wanted to create, the list building, the marketing, the development. We are actually going to track 
all of our tasks for the month and what area of our business, right, in that business plan they relate to. So we know, oh, wow, this month I spent a lot of time on par- on products, but not a lot of time on marketing. I didn't do a lot of marketing, right? And information like that becomes data that you use to really track your results accurately to understand what those 20% of activities are that drive 80% of your results, right? And this is how we're going to be tracking what we're working on so that we understand what really moves the needle for our business and what really makes a difference for us. Okay, now we're getting into the business objectives. I know I've gotten myself ahead of myself there, but next, the business objectives. Okay, so this is the business objectives insert in the CEO strategy planner. On one side, there is a workflow, right? So this workflow for the objective is intended to be a place where you're going to be pre-planning an objective, especially one where a process might not be very clear at the onset. How often have you said, okay, well, I'm going to do this in my business. I'm going to build out a website for my, my business, right? But I'm not sure how to do it, right? You're not really clear what order you're going to put tasks in, what makes sense. So this workflow page of the, uh, of the business objectives is something that will help you to create your own workflow, what your order of operations is going to be in order to, you know, create that action plan for achieving your objective. So define the objective up at the top and then start with your known steps. So on this workflow, there is an area that says known steps, right? So you will go in and put in a known step. And then for each known step, think about if there's a prerequisite before you can do that known step. Do you think there might be something you need to do before that known step? Okay, if there is, fill it in. If once you get that known step done, is there something that you know would logically happen after, right? What's the logical next step to follow up that known step with, right? And by kind of mapping out all of your known steps that way, it's going to help you to do a really good brain dump of all of the tasks that you need to do in order to achieve your objective. You know, a lot of people say that when it comes to things to their business, they're not sure how to do a lot of things. But let me tell you, I know this from firsthand experience working with so many clients over the years that you actually know a lot more than you think you do, (laughs) right? You actually are much more logical. You understand a lot more than you're giving yourself credit for. You've done a lot of research. If I know you, if you're sitting here watching this video, you've done a lot of research on your, for your business. And so you really do know more than you think you don't do. And I think it's very important that you start by kind of brain dumping all of those things that you know for reaching an objective and then organizing it yourself. You can always go ahead and do more research to fill in the blanks but you're going to take that raw information and what you're going to do is create a strategic project plan for it, right? So on the project plan, you can see on the right side here, you're going to define the basic project parameters, the project, the start date, the due date, right? Then you're going to break your project into phases, right? So let's say you're building out a website, right? What would phase one for you be? Would it be the, you know, securing the URL and the hosting, right? And buying a theme and getting that set up, right? Maybe that's phase one and then phase two might be actually like creating individual pages that you need on your website. And then maybe phase three would be start blogging. Maybe phase four, you're going to add a shop element into your website. However, it makes sense to you. There's no, really, there's no defined right way to do anything with business, right? But that's what I'm trying to say is that you kind of have the information inside of you already for how you can get started, and you get to be the one that creates the strategy here. You're the get, you get to be the one who defines how you're going to spend your time here. So list it all out in the workflow tracker, put it into the project plan, organize it into phases where you identify the phase of the project, the individual strategic action steps, and when each of those are due so that then you could take those due dates and those action steps and apply them to the proper monthly business plan as we already saw previously, right? So this is how our projects are getting from that big picture vision that we made for our business, breaking it down across quarters, breaking it down across the months of the year, and then each month we're grabbing those those tasks and we're assigning them to our monthly master task list for our business, right? That is the business objectives. Also within the business objectives um, are the project budget and tracker, 
right? Because for many of us, when you do a project for your business, it costs money, right? Like trying to create a new product costs money, right? Like investing in building out a website costs money, right? So we very often have a project budget that we need to be mindful of, right? So here you can actually keep track of the anticipated and actual expenses of your project. And on the project tracker, that gives you a top line view of all of the projects that you have going on, their budgets and the final costs. This is gonna be really helpful for you when it comes to tax time, having this financial information organized by project, right? Okay, so that's project, project budgeting and tracking. Next, the marketing plan. Okay, so the first part of my creative marketing plan is the content brainstorm. So here, this is the way that I actually create my content, like come up with all of my great like content ideas. I start with using content keywords, right? So what keywords or search terms or categories do you use to attract your audience? For me, it would be things like productivity, business, time management, manifestation, things like that could be content keywords. So at the top of this insert, you have the ability to fill in the content keyword that you're trying to brainstorm content for. And of course, these things are going back to what, what are, what is the thing that you're marketing this month, right? What is the focus that you're trying to sell this month? What are you, what are you focused on this month? And if we were saying, if I was to say that I'm trying to, uh, you know, sell a hundred of these little phone <laughs> cases, phone holders, um, what kind of content could I be creating that would be selling this, right? So the content keyword might be like technology or office supplies, things like that. Maybe productivity, maybe business, depending on that. But think of the content categories that revolve around the thing you're trying to sell, right? So you fill in those content categories. And then for each content category, we also have, or I should say content keyword, we also have these five content categories that we use. That we use. So there's the keywords first. That's one thing, the content keywords, right? Then we get into our content categories right here. The categories of content, these are the five types of content that you could be creating. Content that educates, entertains, inspires, informs, or interacts. So content that educate is when you teach them, your, your followers or your viewers or readers, or whatever, something that has to do with your brand or business. So what can I teach on this, right? Maybe what could I? What kind of content could I say? Could I be teaching people something that then this would be helpful for them? Okay, so how to keep your desk organized, right? Right. How to? How to keep your desk organized? That's educating people, and this could be something that I say is something to help you organize your desk, right? Entertain. Show them something funny or relatable. Inspire. Give them a message to uplift them. Inform. Show them the behind the scenes of what goes into your brand or your business or inform. Show them how your product works, right? So you do a video and you're like, okay, this is how this video, this works, right? This could be considered, I guess, education or information, but right? You're showing people show and tell that could be informational as well. Interact. Engage with your audience, ask them questions, build community, sell to them. Hey guys, I've made this new, I, I'm creating this new product. What color do you want this in, right? Do you want this in black? Do you want this in silver? You want it in gold? Do you want it in rose gold? Do you want it in red, right? That's an example of how you could be interacting with your customers. So in the content brainstorm, we identify our content, our content keywords, and then we break that keyword down into content based on what content we could do to educate, entertain, inspire, inform, and interact with our audience. And that's where we kind of just brain dump all of these wonderful ideas that we can then organize into our content planner for the month. So planning, this is how you can plan content for a month or up to a quarter, right? So I generally do this a month at a time, but depending on how often you post, maybe you want to plan for a quarter of a time at a time for your own life, right? So on the content planner, I have an opportunity, like an area where you can list out what you're creating or promoting this month, right? And we're saying, you know, in this ongoing example, I'm selling a hundred of these phone stands this month. Okay, so next we have an area 
for your opt-ins. So where are you directing your audience to in your content? Very often when it comes to content marketing, you are actually going to want to have some sort of call to action in your content where you're directing people to do something. A lot of times the call to action might be to actually purchase something, but it could also be to actually download an opt-in. The way at the start of this video, I told you that you could download a business planning clarity journal for free, and that puts you on my email list so that we can stay in touch and you can hear more about the things that I have to offer on the topic of business planning, etc. right? So what are your opt-ins that you may need to be focused on this month in order to help you to sell whatever products you're selling, to reach whatever goals uh, or revenue goals you're trying to hit, um, list those out. And then also your campaigns. So what campaigns do you need to be creating content for or be mindful of in your business planning when it comes to creating your marketing plan for the month, right? So it's one thing, you know, you, you definitely don't want to be in a situation where you've created a whole plan of all posts for the month, but then you also have like a marketing campaign going on to sell something completely different, right? Like that really probably wouldn't be doing you a service. You're not kind of putting all of your energy and all of your content behind you know, the same focus, the same objective that you're trying to reach. So it's a really good idea to know your campaigns as well. And then on the content planner, you have an opportunity to fill in three platforms for your content creation, right? So identify three platforms and list out the content that you plan to create during that time period based on what you brainstormed earlier in that content brainstorm sheet. So for me, if this were me, I could put in like YouTube, Instagram, and my blog or my email list, right? And then I could list out all of the content ideas that I have for the month that belong to that specific platform, okay? So that is how we're gonna plan our content for the month. Then we have content outlines, right? So. I think it's a very good idea when you have outlined what your content is for the month, you've created that monthly editorial calendar, that you then go ahead and bulk process outlining your content as well, right? So anytime that we can bulk process things, right, do the same thing over and over, that's going to save us a lot of time and a lot of mental energy. So that is why I have these content outline worksheets included with the marketing plans, where you're, it's going to give you the ability to list out the type Title or the subject of your post or your content. So what is the title or subject line of the content? The date, what date is it being published for? So you that you know when you have to have it ready by. The call to action, what are you directing your audience to do with this content? Are you going to say purchase my product or are you going to say download this free opt-in to get on my email list for more information, etc.? What is your call to action going to be? Then the opt-in, right? Is there an opt-in that can be paired with this content for list building purposes? Media, what forms of media go along with this content? Are you going to have to create video? Are you going to have to take some pictures? Is it just going to be written text? List all those elements out. And then the key points, right? Bullet or outline the message itself, right? What's the bullet outline of what you're going to be talking about in that piece of content? And when you have all of that created, right? It's going to take so much time off of your plate. It's going to make it so much easier for you to then create content when you have those basic outlines kind of just like brain dumped and organized for the month. Then there are content trackers, right? So the next part of the marketing plan is to actually track your content. So you're going to keep track of your content creation on these trackers, and it gives you the ability to track content by platform. So I've listed out a whole bunch of platforms at the top of this insert, right? So things like website, blog, YouTube, Instagram, podcast, Facebook, Twitter, email, other, right? So you can identify what platform the content is going to relate to on that page. And then you can list out all of those content titles, right? Things that you have planned to write, or maybe even just ideas that you are just keeping track of that aren't yet on your monthly um, editorial calendar yet. They're not on your monthly marketing plan yet. You can list those out on a page like this and keep track of them. This is one of the ways that like planning <laughs> helps you organize ideas, capture ideas, so you don't forget about anything. And then it has the ability to give you um, check, check boxes for your progress, right? So 
again, just gonna pull out one of these from my actual planner, just to give you guys a peek at it. So the actual check boxes on this say message, media, scheduled, and promote. So have you recorded or written the message? Have you put together all the media that you need to for it? Have you scheduled the actual post? And once the post is live, have you promoted it, cross-promoted it to other platforms of yours in order to kind of spread the news about your piece of content, right? Because another one of the best tips I can give you for marketing your business and with content is... Don't just create a piece of content and then just let it go live and don't say anything about it. You want to make sure you're cross-promoting on other platforms as well so the maximum number of people can see the content that you've worked diligently to produce for them. Okay, then we have a, con a campaign builder, right? So this campaign builder is to help you create a marketing campaign, right? Which is, to me, a marketing campaign is any organized effort to actually market something for a specific outcome, usually to sell something, right? So to start off with this, what is the campaign name? Give it a name, right? <laughs> Just so you can identify it. Then list the objective, like what outcome are you trying to achieve with this campaign? Are you trying to sell something? How many of the things are you trying to sell, et cetera? The key messaging. So what are three key phrases or messages that you're using to connect with your audience or customers, right? List those out on the campaign builder. Of course, the start and end date for the campaign. And then the assets. So what marketing copy, photos, graphics, video, or other assets do you need to create to go along with this marketing campaign? The metrics. What are three metrics that you're using to measure the success or progress of the campaign? Very important is that we actually track metrics for your campaign to ensure that things are moving in the right direction. So one very easy metric that I always include on my marketing campaigns, especially when I'm trying to sell something, right? is what is my target number that I'm trying to sell versus the actual, right? So like how many products did I sell? This is my target. This is the actual. And then what percentage did I actually hit, right? Um, then on the back side of the campaign builder, you have a broadcast tracker. So this is where you'll list out all of the individual messages that are going to be going out publicly during this campaign, right? So all of the blog posts, all of the videos, all of the emails that you're going to be sending what day are you sending it? What platform is that message going on? What is the, you know, the title of the message so you to keep track of it? And you can check off once you have it actually sent, right? Or created, whatever works for you. So this is basically how I manage all of my marketing campaigns, right? Very succinct to the point, but it really helps you to track all of the work that you have to do. And of course, then you can take some of these, you know, any of these elements and put them on your master monthly to-do list for your business plan, right? So your monthly business planning page, you can take any of these activities and put them on there as well so that you're ensuring things get done. So that was everything in the marketing plan section of the CEO strategy planner. The final part of the planner is financial planning. So the financial planning starts with your annual profit and loss. Again, very similar to a traditional business plan, but much more streamlined, simplified for creative business owners, small businesses, etc. So on one page, we have the yearly overview. This is where you're going to track your overall income and expenses, which is great for tax season. This kind of becomes like a one pager for your taxes. And then on the second page, you have your annual P&L, which is your profit and loss statement. So this is going to be the big picture view of your business's profitability. And so so across the months of the year, you can track your income, your expenses, and then decide, you know, what's the net profit loss for each month. So you can understand if, you're, you know, you can take this information and you'll be able to see what months did the best so that you can get, then go ahead and look through your business plans and say, okay, so what did I do in February that got me such great results? as opposed to April when maybe I didn't have the best results, right? You'll be able to actually take this information, the actual financials, and understand where you need to be looking into and digging into what your activities were for those months. And that's why you've got those business plans <laughs> for the month and the quarter so you can really drill down and see what you were focused on, what you got done, what you accomplished, and what the real needle movers are. You're gonna be able to kind of review your own data and understand what really those 20% of activities that lead to 80% of your results are. 
Then we've got some bill trackers, right? Because when you run a business, you've got a lot of bills, a lot of invoices that you have to pay. So there is a monthly bill tracker for you to keep track of all your bills that you pay each month, pretty straightforward. And then a yearly bill tracker. This is great for any bills that you get like recurring month over month, right? That it's always the same price. You can say the bill, the due date, the amount, and you know you can check off that you paid it or that the, you know, the money was auto drafted from your account just to make sure that all your accounts are current. Then an income and expense tracker. This is where we're going to drill down a little bit more deeply, right, than the overall information that you get in the PL. This is going to help you to maximize your income and minimize your expenses. So it's basically a running list of monthly income and expenses. Your anticipated and actual figures can be put on there. So let's say you have an expense and you have and you anticipate or you've budgeted for a certain uh, amount of money, and then it actually comes out to, to something else, you're able to kind of track all of that information. And then of course, you can hit, you can track the date the item actually hits your books as well for record keeping purposes. Next, we've got the savings tracker, right? So a lot of small business owners, like I said, we're not taking out tons of business loans to help support our business. Very often when we're investing in our business, it's because we have set aside our own money. We're saving our own, you know, income and revenue from our business to then reinvest in our business and grow and expand and get the things that we need in order to, you know, further our business growth. So to grow your savings, I have this savings tracker included in the CEO strategy planner where you can set and track savings goals for your business income by month. Pretty self-explanatory. You can set the goal and then you can track how you're going or allocate money across the months of the year and say, I need to save this amount of money, you know, in March, this amount of money in um, October, et cetera. And then also, finally, um, there is a donation tracker um, in which I, I always find that a lot of small businesses are really great about committing to giving, right? I see that, you know, you see it a lot with corporate companies, but a lot of small businesses do this as well. So many businesses choose to support their favorite causes with portions of their income or general giving goals. So this is a way that you'll be able to track your donations. And of course, you know, if you're in the US at least, all of that information as well is helpful because it's also a deduction on your taxes as well. So it's good to have that information tracked on its own little tracker. Again, just like the savings goal by month, track how much you are giving and then how close or how far you are from your actual goal. Okay, so. That is my business planning process and the tools that I use to plan my business, a la the CEO strategy planner. So tell me now in the comments, what are you thinking? If you're thinking to yourself, wow, Alexis, thank you so much. All of that information was so helpful and inspiring. However, can I repay you? If that's what you're thinking right now, this next section is for you and P.S. I love you as well. Thank you so much for your support. Let's go ahead and talk about the CEO strategy planner, the strategic business planning inserts, and the offer I have for you. First, the CEO strategy planner itself. What exactly is it? This is a strategic business planner that has over 80 undated print on demand, print at home, or you can take it to Staples or any other print shop and get it printed, inserts. The old, it's the ultimate business planning tool. And I still, even though I created this back in, I think 2020 was when I first launched it, I still have not found its rival anywhere on the internet. There is nothing like the CEO strategy planner for planning out your business. Not only does it give you a complete structure and process to follow, but it also gives you the inserts where you can actually use them in your planner if you're like me and you're a paper planner lover as well. It's designed for creative entrepreneurs, small business owners, bloggers, YouTubers, podcasters, and social media influencers. It's going to help you to create a vision for your business and break that vision down into manageable steps. I think we've already kind of seen how that works, right? It's going to help you set clear objectives and outline plans that help you work more efficiently. You're going to be able to maximize your marketing efforts by organizing and outlining content campaigns and messages. You're going to keep a close eye on your financial targets to grow your income, shrink your expenses, and get direct visibility to your business's profitability. 
Again, one more time, we're going to go ahead and, and review all of the inserts that are included inside of the CEO Strategy Planner. Like I said, over 80 undated <laughs> inserts. So the business planning inserts that we've got are business plan divider, right? So there's dividers as well that are in here. So you can create your perfect organization system. Executive summary, target market, brand vision, monthly objectives overview, yearly business plan, quarterly business plan, and your monthly business plan, right? We already reviewed those. Next, your business objectives come with the objectives divider, the workflow insert, the project plan, project budget, and project tracker. The marketing plan includes the marketing plan divider, the content brainstorm, content planner, content outline, content tracker, and the campaign builder. The financial plan inserts are the finance divider, the P&L, the yearly financial overview, monthly bill tracker, yearly bill tracker, income and expense tracker, savings tracker, and of course, the donation tracker as well. And there are some bonus downloads that go along with the CEO strategy planner just to help you, again, to improve your experience and make it as organized and personal as possible. So first off, you get a set of printable planner tabs. So I have the actual tabs to organize the planner. So you can actually print those out on full sheet sticker paper and then cut them out and you actually will have your own tabs for your planner. Let's see if I can show you here. Yeah, if I pull down, you can see I've got my tabs in there, right? These are printable tabs that you can use and reuse to create the perfect organization system for your business planning. Then you have the CEO cover or dashboard, the my favorite position is CEO, an inbox and an outbox divider, a month, the monthly dividers for every month of the year, so January through December, the CEO desktop wallpaper, so my favorite position is CEO, desktop wallpaper, and a smartphone wallpaper, just so everything matches, right? Because we love things to be matchy-matchy, it's a vibe. Here's some additional miscellaneous information about the planner. So the file prints at half letter, A5, letter, A4, and it comes with detailed print instructions. It's undated, so you can use it year after year. It's print on demand. So you have all the inserts you need whenever you need them, and it integrates nicely with the physical or digital planner of your choice. Like I had said earlier, I use the CEO Strategy Planner in conjunction with my Master Planner because the CEO Strategy Planner is the place where I'm able to outline everything and break everything down into strategic you know, tasks and actions. And then I take all of that and I schedule it inside of my calendar and agenda for my master planner. So this is a, a, a really a bundle. The CEO strategy planner is really a bundle of inserts that you can use with any other planner system. It makes the perfect business planner to supplement your calendar and agenda inserts, right? And that means that if you use a different physical planner, like a different paper planner, you can still use the CEO strategy planner. And if you use some sort of digital planning tools, maybe you use um, you know, your, to, your reminders and to-do lists on your phone or on your computer, or you use things like Asana or Basecamp or Monday.com, any of these sorts of project management softwares, you can also integrate with those with your CEO strategy planner because the CEO strategy planner is just the business planning inserts. And then you can take that information, those raw actions and scheduled items and put them into any planner system to make sure you get things done, any planning and time management system to get them done. And guess what? The CEO strategy planner now comes in a digital planner version as well. That's right. If you're a digital planner and don't do paper planning, this new optimized version of the CEO strategy planner is the perfect business planning companion for you. It includes the same 60 plus elegantly designed worksheets for business planning. This version is hyperlinked with tabs and navigation links to make capturing and locating information a breeze. It's compatible with iPad, tablets, smartphones, and other PDF annotation devices and software, and it's still undated. So you can buy it once and use it year after year to plan your business success. So thank you so much to all of you who are purchasing the planner right now. I hope you absolutely love it. And thank you so much for joining me for today's free training. I hope you got a lot of value out of today. And don't forget to download that free business planning clarity journal, right? Because I think that's a really good step one for all of you after watching today's training. So do the training. You obviously have gotten to the end now. Go ahead, do the journaling prompts. 
Get yourself the CEO strategy planner. Have a wonderful year of strategic business success. And I'm here if you need me, go ahead and leave me any questions down in the comments. And I would be glad to answer those for you. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to give this video a thumbs up. Feel free to share it with anyone you think would find it helpful. And until next time, bye-bye.